Tomorrow afternoon, Saturday musical is the famous Cold Water One, Can Can. It stars Frank Sinatra, Shirley MacLaine, Maurice Chevalier, Louis Jordan, and Julia Prowse. And that's tomorrow afternoon at 3.55. Programmes for Holiday Monday on BBC Two. At five past seven, from Magna Carta to Microchip, the first of the Royal Institution Christmas lectures for young people. This year's theme is measurement, and the lecturer is Professor R.B. Jones. At five past eight, I'll be looking back over 1981 in Scoop of the Year with Graham Garden, Diane Harron, Jane Walmsley, Richard Stilgo, Derek Jameson, and Miles Kington. And I do hope that you can be with us. At nine o'clock, Genica, a look at the background to and history of Picasso's masterpiece, which finally found a home in Madrid this September after more than 40 years of exile. At 9.45, Jack Lemmon stars with Shirley MacLaine in Irma la Duce, Billy Wilder's tale of an overzealous gendarme in the red-light district of Paris. Everybody, everybody, the party's over! Girls on this side, Hey, what is this? A race. Oh, on a Monday? It's supposed to be every other Friday. Can I go back up again? Holiday Monday programs on BBC Two. And now it's time for us to join Richard Baker for a news summary. The time is 11 and a half minutes to 7. Good evening. The headlines tonight, a reliable report tonight from Poland, says the Communist Party has become a victim of martial rule. Football manager Brian Clough is in hospital after having chest pains. 20 people have died in floods in Portugal and two in a ski lift accident in the Italian Alps. And here at home, that bear on the run on Hackney Marsh, if there is one, appears to have gone well and truly to ground. In Poland, it's the first day back to work after Christmas, and it's not clear how many people have turned up to work. But official sources say that a thousand miners near Katowice are still defying the authorities on an underground sit-in. Reports from Poland now say that there's been no sign of a Communist Party Central Committee meeting, and that the Communist Party in its present form is dead. Two weeks after martial law, it seems the military have secured the country and feel they must hold it. Floods and landslides following months of drought have killed at least 20 people in one village in Portugal. There have been heavy rains all over the country since the drought, which lasted almost a year, ended at the weekend. The worst hit area is the north of the country. The 20 people died in the wreckage of a cafe after a flash flood hit the village of Arosa. A ski lifts accident in the Italian Alps resort of Taris has killed two holidaymakers and injured a dozen more. The lift brakes failed and skiers were thrown into the snow or onto the walls of the terminal installation. It's the worst skiing accident in Italy for five years. Many skiers were able to save themselves by jumping onto soft snow. The Nottingham Forest manager Brian Clough is in hospital in Derby suffering from chest pains. A consultant who's just seen him says he has not had a heart attack and his condition is said to be satisfactory. Soviet dissident and Nobel Prize winner Andrei Sakharov has been suffering heart trouble since he ended his hunger strike. He made his hunger strike protest to force the Soviet government to let his wife's daughter-in-law, Lisa Alexeyeva, emigrate. Mrs Sakharov has appealed to the West to make the Soviet authorities provide proper medical treatment. In Italy, the American NATO general, James Dozier, is still being held by terrorists of the Red Brigades. Italian police are exam examining documents found in a dustbin and issued by the Red Brigades group holding him. So far, a reward of £100,000 has failed to produce any information which might help the police. In Scotland, a derailed train left 30 passengers and crew stranded for three hours in unheated carriages. The train ran into a snowdrift between Glasgow and Fort William and the first three carriages and the engine left the rails. No one was hurt. A body and an empty life raft from the missing Panamanian freighter Mark have been spotted by two ships off Land's End. The life raft was later picked up by the Senan lifeboat, but no body has been recovered in the worsening weather conditions so far. Cricket, the third test between England and India in New Delhi, has ended, as expected, in a draw. The result means that India still have a one-match lead in the six-match series, with three games left to play. And Keith Fletcher has denied reports that he's unhappy with the slow scoring rate of opener Geoffrey Boycott. The England captain said he'd reassured Boycott, who broke the record for scoring test runs in the Delhi Test, said that he was completely happy with his performances. England soccer captain Kevin Keegan 
played his 400th league game today. He scored twice for Southampton against Swansea, taking his tally for the season to 14, one more than his previous best in a season. In East London, police and wildlife experts are still looking for what's believed to be a brown bear on the loose. The search is concentrated at Hackney Marshes, where three boys found large paw marks in the snow yesterday. Today, armed police and a helicopter looked for the bear without luck. They'll search again tomorrow. And that's the news on two this evening. We'll be back with our main bulletin on BBC One at half past ten. And now here's the weather news. Tomorrow will be another dull, misty day in most parts of the country with a cold easterly wind. The north of Scotland is the only place that will see any brightness, though even here there will be a few snow showers. Over the rest of the country it will be cloudy and misty with outbreaks of rain, sleet or snow. The heaviest precipitation is likely in Wales and southwest England. Rain is the most likely form of precipitation for central and southern areas of England and Wales with sleet on the hills, but further north sleet or snow will be the order of the day and temperatures will be similar to today's. And that's the rather dreary weather forecast for tomorrow. Now we apologise to viewers in Lancashire and in areas of the northwest of England for a loss of programme on BBC One this evening. This is due to a fault at the Winter Hill transmitter and we are doing our best to put it right as soon as possible. In just over ten minutes, the first of this year's Royal Institution Christmas Lectures for Young People from Magna Carta to Microchip is given by Professor R. V. Jones. 100 Great Paintings now continues its theme of music with Roman landscape by Caracci. This painting was, in its time, considered to be a new development in art. <laughs> 